Over the years, there's been a number of things that are censored in comics as part of what an editor does, but those things are not always obvious. In many ways, back with the old Comics Code Authority, there is at least a semi-coherent uh, list of things you could and could not do, even though that list itself had a lot of notorious loopholes. That's probably a video for another time. But today, trying to publish comics today, you do have limitations on what you can do, even with black label comics from DC. Uh, what are those things and why? Hey everybody, this is Perch. The idea of censorship in comics is an interesting one because there's a lot of depth to it and the, the you know, too long didn't read version of everything I'm about to say is that simply the rules kind of get it made up as they go along. And in many cases, it's the personality of the editor, the how closely they're paying attention to your work at the time. And it doesn't always have a lot of logic to it. It tends to be all over the place. Now, uh, there's a recent interview over on Newsrama with, uh, or now it's Game something or other. I, I don't know what it's like. Why, why did you change what was a Game's Radar? It's, it's not as sad when these comic news sites, ah, it's a video for another time. I don't want to go off on that tangent, but whatever. But anyway, Newsarama, I'm just going to keep calling it that. Uh, they do an interview with Amanda Connor and, uh, and uh, Jimmy Palmetti. And basically about, they've got a, a series in DC of Harley Quinn. It's Black Label. So that's the you know, the uncensored, uh, you know, you could have a bat penis in there, but you can't really. But anyway, that's, that's, that's black label. And they talk a little bit about their book. And in particular, they talk about a few of the times when they get notes back from editorial saying, you need to take this out, or you can't have this in there. So first off, um, it's, it's worth kind of noting or, or, you know, right from the beginning, um, there are some requirements around what you can and can't sit, do in black label. In comics, there had been this kind of perception that black label is where you can do whatever you want, and that this this you know more censored work or other stuff uh, was was doable in black label. You weren't you weren't going to be restricted by what you put in there. And as we we found out, or as we've seen and hear heard, that's not the case. I mean, from the uh, the whole uh, bat penis uh, being asked to be removed, but also it's it's like it's it's a interesting mix of what they want to curate for that book. It's not just the wild west of whatever you want to do, but this is nothing new. Um, in many cases in comics, like the 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 dam will get built up, and then an editor will allow. Like I remember this this goes back a long ways, but the word ass um, was not allowed for a while. You couldn't say it in comics, and then. Uh, back in the in the eighties, um, it, it came out in a comic book. Like somebody was able to say, "I'm going to kick your ass," and it was like this big kind of moment. And for whatever reason, they they snuck it past. You hear these stories from time to time with editors talking about how they they're able to sneak these things past the, uh, the censors, and and they're able to get it out there. And then once they get it out there, then it's like it's it's like a legal case. Suddenly, it's created precedent that uh, everybody else can then use it too. And then before you know it, there's there's ass everywhere, and <laughs> that doesn't sound quite right. But anyway, it, it is this case where um, you, you know once once something is done, then it tends to open up the door for everything else. And we see that uh, you know a lot of a lot of other comics can can do the same thing, use the same moments. And in general, with comics, um, you know. Swear words have been forever, like, they're a complete taboo until they get used once and they can get used again. Violence is pretty much a uh, fair game, although sometimes, you know, weird violence. Like, for a long time, you couldn't, you know, editors were restricting if you showed a woman getting hit or attacked or punched or just something like that. It had to be done from a distance or the woman had to be drawn from behind. Like, you could show a woman getting slapped or punched. But only if, like, her back was to you and the strike was happening kind of off panel and then she's, like, flying at you. So in a weird way, artists would draw it, it that something that looked, like, way more horrifying than if they'd showed it from a different angle. But they're trying to censor it because they don't want to show, you know, violence against women or some of these other things. And then for whatever reason. But the way they then draw it 
winds up looking way worse than uh, how it was initially. I think that Hank Pym uh, slapping Janet Van Dyne or kind of backhanding her was an example of that where it wasn't meant to be as violent or as uh, rough as it came across. But the way the comic was drawn, it just looks like like she is just like super, you know, you know, finisher kind of moment. Um, the sex is another one where uh, that tends to be taboo. And so you can always tell like when a comic book um, is in, in indie comic and it's it's not being regulated by Marvel or DC. And so they almost go overboard with showing things. But even there, like, uh, you know, it's not. It, it's it's like this weird half step. I, I always remember um, people coming in and they would order kind of hentai or you know really really dirty manga. And there's um, let's see. I want to say this in a way that's not going to get everything demonetized. Uh, it's not the demonetization. So I get these annoying messages in YouTube where it's like YouTube finds this video terrible and it's like it's it's brought to your attention. So I want to say this in the right way uh, possible. In in Japan. Um, certain body parts for a while were not allowed to be shown or drawn. So to get around that, the artists would replace those body parts with fruit and banana was too obvious, but there'd be like a pineapple or a melon that would just be uh, there. Um, or sometimes, and this is where like the artist, it felt like the artist was really, you know, ticked off. They would just erase the uh, male body part. They could show the female body parts all over the place. Although uh, for a while without, you know, you couldn't show hair, which, which again made it somehow super creepier, but they would show like full blown sex scenes inside a manga, but they would not show kind of the, the male part. So you just have this void, uh, that was kind of, you know, use your imagination. You guys can get the idea of what's going on. Um, but that was, that was a way that it was done, uh, for, for a while. Super weird. Um, it, it, it creates some really, really oddball moments in comics. But what was always strange about that was that they could show, they could, they could have sex scenes there. They could have, you know, fairly in-depth things. And, and um, uh, in Japan, there was a, a big genre of manga where it would be uh, siblings uh, would be uh, doing the deed, so to speak. But they would, and so they're okay with that. They're okay with this idea, this premise. They're okay with, um, you know, fairly full-blown nudity. And the edits that they they insisted on were somehow creepier than if they had not edited it at all. Um, but then they'd have to erase, like, the male part. Which, I, anyway, it makes no sense. Comic books have a long history of being super, super strange for censorship. And the rules are, and this is why the TL, or T, too long, didn't read TLDR art, is just, it, it, the stuff never made much sense. It never was really clear why the rules were one way and not, you know, why, why it broke down the way it did. It always felt like somebody was, or some group of people were sitting around trying to figure out the rules, but they didn't really have a lot of time or attention to do it. They didn't really want to invest the energy. And so they would just kind of come up with a few rules and then kind of they'd get tired and then they'd want to go out to a strip joint or something and then they'd, they'd stop figuring out the rules. And so we have all of these half-baked rules that the editors would have to interpret. And one of the things that you, 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 you'll hear or have heard at comic companies is how the, a lot of the interpretation for how these things worked were left completely up to the editors trying and figure out. And everybody had their own style. And kind of the, the mandate for a lot of people, especially, especially in the 70s and 80s and even early 90s, was, you know, figure it out for yourself. You have a lot of latitude. If you do it wrong, you're fired. Good luck. And so in, in many cases, that system, I think, worked for the publishers because it, it provided this weird self-censorship. You know, if, if uh, an editor was not sure if it was going too far or not, they would just not. Um, you know, they, they would just opt out of doing anything and, um, you know, the problem, problem takes care of itself. Um, but this was arguably um, not, you know, none of this was a good way of doing things. None of this led to good comics or, or good output. And it's why you see such disjointed things. And, and in fact, if you go back and you look at comics, what you will find is uh, 
these these interesting little moments where a comic gets away with something like a beheading or some kind of like a fist being punched through another person or swearing or a butt. Like it, it was interesting. Like the first comic could like show a butt, and then uh, suddenly several others could show butts, or you know they they put little things on it. Like it. But what would happen is like a comic comes out, gets published, gets out into the market, and usually there's like a one month window where everybody kind of holds their breath to see if people are going to be upset about it. And then when they're not, um, then like four months later, five months later, you'd see a bunch of other comics doing the same thing. It's like once, once one person kind of planted the flag on the mountain, it was like a free for all for others to do it. And censorship has changed as well. I mean, there, there, there was a lot of kind of more, I would say more prude behavior about kind of how women were treated and what kind of costumes they wear. And then in the, like the, the late eighties or so we got to far more of a cheesecake type uh, way of doing comics. And that was okay for a while. And then uh, it got in in the nineties, it got extreme where you'd see just like super bizarre renditions of of women in particular. And like just guys with 8 million muscles, but nobody's ever going to want to censor that. Um, even though it looked disgusting, but anyway, uh, you'd, you'd see these women that look really, really weird in like the smaller and smaller and smaller costumes. And then, uh, then the, you know, it became like the renditions were no longer kind of cheesecake friendly and became kind of just gross. And then suddenly everybody pulled back and we got kind of the opposite for a while. We got, we got a, a, a definite kind of pullback of, of a lot of that content. And then different people come in and do different things. But today, What's interesting is just how even uh, places like Black Label that, that purports to be kind of the place where the true artistic vision can come out, where it's a little bit more adult content, a little bit more dark. Uh, even there, you're getting things like, you know, we can't have Batman say that. We can have Harley Quinn say that. But, you know, Superman would never say fart. So let's let's remove that. We don't want Superman to say fart. But we're okay with uh, Damian Wayne can say fart. Batman can say fart if, you know, maybe... He's, uh, he's saying it in a serious way. Harley Quinn can say fart every page. You know, Guy Gardner, fart's okay. Uh, Hal Jordan, okay. Barry Allen, maybe, depending on the context. It, it, it's, it's, a very, it's a very weird um, uh, realm of what's okay and what's not. And in some cases, you could argue it's just, you know, proper characterization. But in many cases, it crosses over into uh, to pretty weird, silly territory at times. And, and um uh, uh, you know, it's, it's all the other thing that kind of, by the way, sparks all this is if, if like the popular TV show at the time, if Game of Thrones could get away with it, then a lot of comics were like, we, we want to get away with it. And I remember the, uh, was a bunch of comic creators at San Diego Comic Con on panels kind of bemoaning the fact that Game of Thrones could just have, you know, kind of rampant nudity all over the place, but comics could never do that. And it was, it was unclear from the comments. Are they saying that Game of Thrones was exploitive, or were they saying that, you know, they feel like their hands are tied and they can't do the same thing? So I never could quite tell. Anyway, um, what do you, what about you? Is there stuff that, like, you think should be in comics that just isn't, and it bugs you, that you, you feel like, the you know, you, you came to comics to get an artistic vision, and it's censored? Do you, does it bother you that Black Label is still censored in some ways? Do you care? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. It's, it's a weird, it's a, it's a weird line. Uh, absolutely uh, to cross in a lot of different respects. Um, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter or Facebook at Comic Perch, and thanks for listening.